What's up, guys? I'm Combat Craig, and today I have a special guest with me. Her name is Kelly. She's a sleep disorder specialist, and she's going to help me with uh, sleep apnea ratings, uh, some of the symptoms, why you might end up with one rating instead of another rating. And I'm going to quit uh, rambling on. And hi, Kelly. How are you doing? Let's do both hey, of us Craig. at the same time. <laughs> Sorry. It's great. Let's start with... Uh, we're going to we're going to talk about a uh, sleep apnea ratings there's four of them 0 30 50 and 100%. Let's start off with a 0% rating for sleep apnea. Uh, according to the law the CFR it says you are asymptomatic but have a documented sleep disorder. What does that mean to you? So I've given it a little bit of thought and it's kind of a confusing rating depending on how you look at it. One way I was thinking is let's say you were somebody who had a documented sleep disorder in the past and maybe something improved in your health. So you were obese in the past, you had a sleep study, it showed you had sleep apnea, maybe upper airway resistance, snoring, something going on, and now maybe you've lost some weight. So you have this documented sleep disorder but you're not experiencing the symptoms you had when you first went for that sleep study and symptoms meaning excessive daytime sleepiness or memory issues, um, insomnia maybe even, waking up with morning headaches, having a dry mouth, that kind of thing, getting up frequency, frequently to go to the bathroom. So I take it as something along those lines as having a 0% rating as something already documented, but maybe not experiencing the symptoms. And then the flip side of that might be, maybe you had a sleep study, Maybe it just showed some disordered breathing that doesn't quite meet the um, rules for what sleep apnea or, or, or under breathing might be, and yet you really have no symptoms to go along with it either. Maybe your doctor said, hey, Craig, you look like you might need a sleep study, so why don't we send you for one and see what happens? And then, so and then um, as I understand it, Mild, moderate, severe, I believe, are the different um, categories of it. So this would be, the, the results would be um, underneath normal. mild, right? Normal. Would normal, I would think. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Okay. There's a normal range in there. Sure. All right. So that, normal that, there's a normal range breathing. in there. So, there yeah, that range. makes sense to me. Uh, asymptomatic, don't have symptoms is what that means to me. But have a documented sleep disorder. This sounds like normal VA bullshit, mumbo jumbo. Um, we're not, most people that are watching this video are not shooting for 0% because here we're talking about getting paid. So um, yeah, if you have a 0% rating for sleep apnea, go see a doctor and go figure out what's going on. Go get a real diagnosis of a real um, sleep disorder of some kind. And if you don't have one, good for you. I'm glad your health is much better than getting paid a few hundred bucks. Moving well, on. Your symptoms. Or own your symptoms. Or own Maybe your symptoms. The ah, there you go. Good point. Own, own your symptoms. Maybe you're the one who doesn't want to admit that you're doing anything when you're sleeping. There are two times when you don't need a nexus. When you file a claim while you're still on active duty, like a BDD claim, or when you're in the one-year presumptive period. Any other time, you need a nexus. You also need a strategy. Check out my boot camp and contact my med team if you need a nexus. All right, let's... Uh, Let's hop into a 30% VA disability rating for sleep apnea. Uh, according to the law, it says you are experiencing persistent daytime hypersomnolence, and then parentheses it says daytime sleepiness that does not improve even with sufficient sleep. What does that mean, Kelly? So that means some people can have excessive daytime sleepiness even though you are getting enough sleep. I think of those pa people who have narcolepsy. So it's not really a sleep disorder breathing, but maybe you have some underlying condition that causes you to be extra sleepy during the day. And again, that's done through a test, but maybe it might not meet the requirement of needing a CPAP at a 50, you know, at a 50% rating. So you can still have extra sleepiness. There are people who, you know, can get eight hours of sleep at night, but they're still sleepy during the day. Daytime hypersomnolence. So the way I um, understand this, and you just kind of defined it, is, um, yeah, like you'll be 
whatever, doing something, and 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 this all comes down to you, um, how it in, interferes with your work and or your social life. Um, in, in this situation, um, you might be driving to work or from work or whatever, to lunch, maybe it's daytime, uh, whatever. And then you like fall asleep while you're driving or something. That's the most extreme example I've heard from multiple um, people. Is that like deadly, that's, obviously. That's a very extreme case. Well, you know what I'm thinking of too? What about maybe there's medications involved because medications can also play a role in our sleep stages or sleep architecture at night. Maybe they're the reason that you're not getting, you're sleeping. It might not be great sleep. So you were feeling tired during the day. Yep. Restless leg syndrome. Is that what that's called? Or one so of- So restless legs, sure. Restless legs is actually while you're awake. Periodic leg movements is what they call it when you're sleeping. So maybe that's the issue. Or for whatever reason, you have a lot of arousals when you're sleeping. 50% rating for sleep apnea. So this is the one that um, confuses the most veterans. And, you know, once we start figuring out that we're in a game and how to play the game, this is something that we usually move into place as a potential um, claim and rating to factor into the combined ratings table. Um, because a lot of us realize that we actually do have sleep apnea. You uh, and I've talked about the just the, it, it's just uh, ridiculous how little sleep studies are done in this country still to this day, getting better, right? In the last, what, five, 10 years? They've gotten better. If you've reviewed all the medical evidence and you know you're missing something to establish service connection, like a diagnosis or a nexus, you might want to check out my med team. There's a link in the description. They can help you with your missing medical evidence. Moving on. So a lot of us are, are moving this in as a potential claim to file. Um, so a 50% rating says, you require the use of a breathing assistance device such as a CPAP machine. So um, my understanding of this and, and the way it is, is um, if, if this is where you're at, if you have a, if you're prescribed a CPAP machine, that means you already have a diagnosis of sleep apnea and the symptoms portion of that is covered by the prescription of the CPAP machine. The hard part with these claims is the nexus. We're not really going to go into the nexus too much, but um, what are, it says use of a breathing device such as a CPAP machine. There's other breathing devices and then there's non-breathing devices. Maybe we could, maybe you could help out with that a little bit. Well, you know, breathing device, so they talk about CPAP, but there's there's probably a lump, there's a auto PAP, there's a CPAP, there's a BiPAP, there's a BiPAP ST, there's an ASV for the people who have central sleep apnea, there are ventilators probably, so any of those breathing devices in there would probably work. Um, I don't believe for the VA ratings it includes um, the oral appliances. I think this is solely discussing PAP machines as a way to stand And that's good. Open. So so this means and and we're getting in the weeds, but when I when I think about it, breathing assistance device is forcing air into you versus like the mouth guard or the nose, right? Some of those other things are not actually co continuously pushing air into your wherever exactly. it pushes it into. So, true. CPAP is continuous positive airway pressure. Continuous really positive airway pressure. Positive that's airway pressure. Okay. It, so a CPAP usually is a set prescription. So you go in, you have a sleep study done, um, a CPAP test done. The tech who's performing the sleep study is going to make sure that at, at this adequate pressure, you no longer have any apneas. So then their doctor is going to make that a prescription. Your CPAP pressure is set on that machine. Um, a lot of people sometimes end up with an APAP, it's called auto pressure where that machine can automatically adjust when you need it. So maybe you need more pressure while you're sleeping on your back, less pressure while you're laying on your side. So this machine will automatically do that. There are people who need- And to interrupt, I'm pretty sleep. sure that's what I have is the yeah. auto PAP thing. So I, yeah. anyway. They'll set it from a range from a therapeutic pressure of five to maybe 25 and somewhere in between there, you might need it. 
um, BiPAP, it's a bi-level. Sometimes pressures get too high where your inhalation pressure is one pressure, exhalation pressure is a little lower, so it's a little more comfortable. Uh, some people need that. Some people can't tolerate that continuous one pressure in, one pressure out. So BiPAP is a little more comfortable. BiPAP with a backup rate. Some people need extra ventilatory, you know, um, assistance when they're breathing at night. And then, you know, we're talking about obstructive sleep apnea, but there's central sleep apnea where your brain doesn't signal you to breathe. And then there's a whole separate type type of device Mixed. that fills in that breath for you. Oh, and, and then right there's three types of sleep apnea we're really going out, right? Well, there's obstructive. Obstructive. Nothing's, <laughs> nothing's central. getting past here, obstructive. Central, think of your brain as your central components. Your brain is not, not sending you that signal for, your, um, for you to take a breath. And then complex sleep apnea is kind of a mixture of both. You can have okay. both central and obstructive. Okay. And so that auto servo machine asv very intelligent machine like i said it'll watch you sleep for a period of time and then if it notices you're not breathing it will fill in that breath for you there are two times when you don't need a nexus when you file a claim while you're still on active duty like a bdd claim or when you're in the one year presumptive period any other time you need a nexus you also need a strategy check out my boot camp and contact my med team if you need a nexus all right, so um, back to the rating part and just my own frustration with that thing. Like, uh, I'm I'm just, like, really uh, embellishing or whatever, but literally that thing strapping that thing onto me and that cord, like, I can't use that thing. I feel like that thing's wrapped around my legs and I'm hanging from it. And I'm not the only one like this, but I also was diagnosed with mild and I was told, like, y yeah, you might want to start getting used to it. You're, it's not going to kill you at, at the moment. Figure out a way to get some sleep. But a lot of people will use an alternative method other than, you know, air being poofed in. That will take you, and, and that's fine because your health is more important. But for rating purposes, if your assistance device or if you go to Walgreens or you toothpick your lips open or whatever you do to make it work, that wouldn't qualify you for a 50% rating. You need to actually have a diagnosis of the thing. Absolutely. <laughs> You're laughing. No, I am because it made me think of the tongue retainer where you have this thing that suctions your tongue out of your mouth and your tongue's out of your mouth the whole time you're sleeping. But yes, in order to, in order to qualify for this rating, you definitely need to go to your doctor, have a face-to-face, -face, discuss your symptoms, spill them all out there, getting up to go to the bathroom, waking up in the morning headaches, dry mouth in the morning, maybe that uvula on the back of your throat is all swollen, um, your bed partner is telling on you, pushing you, <laughs> pushing you to roll over, or they're the ones who are reporting they can hear you stop breathing, um, you're excessively sleepy during the day because you're not getting good quality sleep, I think you're tired of being tired. So you just need to make sure you talk about those symptoms so that they are documented because that's what the insurance is looking for. And then you have that sleep study done. It proves exactly what your symptoms are. And then you get prescribed this device to help you breathe. This might be a good um, uh, time. Maybe you are considering this as a rating or that you have it. Actually, I, I always talk about rating and money first because healthcare is a different part of the VA. This is benefits. Um, so I'm going to mix the two up. Are you not in my boot camp yet? This is the easiest way that I know to teach you to win your VA claim. Links in the description, combatcraig.com. I think I have sleep apnea uh, or I have some symptoms. And I also have my wife, ex-wife now, telling me I'm a nightmare and and I'm like the aliens taking over my body and I snore a lot and stuff. Um, I, I have to like to get a sleep study. You you they don't just hand them out like Motrin. Uh, I believe there's something called a stop bang test or something like that that you have to like kind of pass for lack of a better word. But what what what's that all about? Um. <laughs> <laughs> the Stop Bank questionnaire was is a questionnaire designed by a group of anesthesiologists, and it's the only subjective questionnaire out there. 
that um, a tool that physicians can use. And the S stands for, do you snore? The T is, are you tired? O, and do you have observed sleep, sleep apnea or observed witness stop breathing? Um, P, do you have high blood pressure? B, is your BMI, I think it's over 32. Age, are you over 50? Neck size is the N, like you said, and I think it's over 16 and a half. I'd have to go back and look. So no, I, I shouldn't say that, maybe 16. And then, um, or 15 and a half. And then G, gender, are you a male? So there's eight questions. Men can answer all eight. Females can answer that same questionnaire, but they can get seven out of eight, obviously, because of that one gender question. Um, and so that's, if you answer three of those as being positive, you're already at risk for some sort of sleep disorder. Uh, I was going to say, I, I believe, I don't believe they asked um, eight, I believe, but they probably did. Maybe they did. Maybe the VA dumbs it down well, to five or something. Some of them. What's a, they yeah. know some of them already. Yeah, oh, they know right, your age. Right. yeah, you don't have to request it if right. you already know my age or you already know, yeah. Or you know whatever. your man. I'm you a know, male. Yeah, you know, okay. you know your BMI. So they're going to ask you the other questions most likely. Okay, that makes sense. So that's the way they would cater to um, gender, right? Male or females. It's just a little bit different. So they are, there's, there's assumptions they can make based on, <laughs> we already know exactly. this about you. Okay. Well, you know, the stop bang questionnaire was really designed for the men more than they were for the women. Because men actually present their symptoms and will admit those kind of symptoms sooner than the females will. The females will report other symptoms. Let's move on to, uh, there's a 100% rating for a lot of disabilities. It's always serious. Um, you run into this with mental health a lot. Hearing loss has 100% rate. There's a lot of them that have 100% ratings. But the criteria is just something you're nowhere near. And in most people's cases, as I understand it, 100% VA disability rating for sleep apnea falls into this category. Um, but let's read through it and maybe you can explain what this actually means. So you have a chronic respiratory failure with carbon dioxide retention and, so you have those two things, and require a tracheostomy. What does all that mean? Okay, so chronic respiratory failure. You could have like a COPD. COPD? A, that could be a chronic respiratory failure. You could have okay. um, somebody might have been a smoker or somebody who was around chemicals or inhaled something for a long time. So you've had some lung damage and- um, So like, what does that look like? It, whatever the diagnosis of it is, it could be a few different things. Like, does that mean that you just, chronic respiratory failure, that sounds pretty bad. Whatever it is, is do you have problems you breathing retain, anyway? Obviously the tracheostomy yeah. part hasn't happened. We haven't talked about that yet. No, so you're retaining more carbon. You're not able to exhale that carbon dioxide. We inhale oxygen, exhale carbon dioxide. Okay. So in those, in our lung where the air exchange happens, the air gets trapped and we're not able to puff out that carbon dioxide. We retain a lot of it. So um, that's what happens with a lot of people who have enlarged lungs on difficulty breathing, exhaling, can't catch their breath. They keep inhaling more than they do exhaling and um, requires a tracheostomy. That might be a little bit extreme, especially these days, I would think, with more technology than Is that there. the tooth thing? <laughs> yes, yes. I've seen I've seen it written in some charts where, you know, if you're not able to wear a CPAP and you're not able to, you know, and you're high up there and you've got some horrible, let's say, sleep apnea, go back to that 50% rating, for example. If you're somebody who won't wear a CPAP and you've got severe sleep apnea, the doctor might say, you know what, we're going to do a, maybe you need to have a tracheostomy. You got to do something. I've seen people stop breathing 125 times an hour. That's significant. And right. if you're not going to wear a CPAP, you're killing yourself for sure. So, so this um, is how we're not going to be a part of that. We're going to jab yeah. a hole in your neck and force you to breathe a different way if that's where, because right. clearly you're right. not using, oh yeah, yeah, I use it every night. No, you don't. <laughs> sure. Right. So along the same lines with this 100% you know, rating, there's got to be some other underlying reason maybe why they can't use um, maybe some sort of assistance as far as, because we see a lot of people still on CPAP for these kind of things. 
but to put on uh to actually do a tracheostomy is pretty extreme and maybe that's that's exactly what they need but also um i don't have the uh the I'm looking at the law, but I don't have the date it was written. Like, this is not current medicine. This has probably been on the books for 20 or 30 years. So, you know. There's there's new things that are happening out there that can actually assist with some of this. So it could be, like you said, old written law. Yeah. Or um, So I think that maybe there's things that potentially need to change. Even enlargement or failure of the right side of the heart due to lung disease. Um, again, all that has to do with just whatever's going on with the lungs, extra pressure on the heart, and squeezing the extra pressure in that upper, you know, chest cavity. So that's you know, you're going to go see a pulmonologist. You're going to go see a heart specialist, and they're going to actually help diagnose this. Okay. There are two times when you don't need a nexus, when you file a claim while you're still on active duty, like a BDD claim, or when you're in the one-year presumptive period. Any other time, you need a nexus. You also need a strategy. Check out my boot camp and contact my med team if you need a nexus. So, 100% rating, kind of for, for multiple reasons, you're kind of explaining one of them. I think this uh, is a little dated but so is a lot of law. And if it's not dated, it's squishy on purpose. Um, regardless, a hundred percent rating for uh, sleep apnea is, um, yeah, you, you need to fall, fall into a couple different weird buckets according well, to this I'm law. Thinking even it's, we're still under the sleep VA, you know, the VA ratings for sleep apnea. So yep. even at hundred percent rating, we're still talking about some sort of apnea going on. And whether it's congestive heart failure or COPD, either one of those, it's still treated. We still treat it with sleep apnea. And if not, maybe it's a vent. Maybe it's not, like I said, so there's a ventilators that are out there and people have them at home and they can puff on them during the day. They can sleep with them at night, sort of like they do with a the CPAP, but it helps them. It's, it's, a, it's a better assistance to their breathing than just a straight CPAP would be. Okay, that makes sense. It's got sense. a different modality. Gotcha. Modality, that's a good word. Modality is the mm -hmm. word for the day.